Hair Collab Time with Catlia Guatemalensis. And of course, the moment I hit record, here we are, and it's starting to get windy, which is a not a good thing with this top heavy orchid. But this Care Collab is together with Lynn Brooks. And I want to say thank you so much, Lynn, for taking the time to join me on this Care Collab series with regards to our Guatemalensis. There's nothing wrong with my orchid. <laughs> She's just a bit dusty. And I thought, well, um, now that I've got her off the shelf, I'm going to just wipe the leaves down because normally she lives tucked away on the south side of my blooming alley, but on the lower, lower shelf where she gets bright light. This time of year, we're at the beginning of March, she gets bright light when the sun is shining, not the case today, but not direct full sun. Now, my question is twofold. Has she not bloomed because the growths aren't as tall as the previous growths that I got her with? Or has she not bloomed because she hasn't gotten enough light? Because this is a warm to hot grower. And I can tell you that when I say warm to hot, maybe in my previous life, I was an orchid at one stage because I like warm to hot and add humid in and I am in heaven. But it is not at this point in time, warm to hot to my liking. So why would I expect an orchid of being a warm to hot grower to like temperatures currently at 15 degrees Celsius. I'm wearing my wind jacket. So my question is, the fact that she's living down on that south facing shelf at the on the lower shelf because of her height, I can accommodate her down there. Is that why she hasn't bloomed for me? I've got the sheaths right there, but they're empty. Or is it because the growths aren't as big as the ones that I got her with, which did bloom, but that wasn't credit to me. I was surprised that she actually did bloom. And three months after I received her, I was like, whoop, hello, there were buds. And I, I was so not expecting that because you can see that my orchid down here, she is a division. It's clear as day. She was cut off another mature plant. And in this division, there is another slice, so there's a piece that is quite wobbly and could break off easily. So somebody was chopping away at a specimen plant. The blooms that I got three months after receiving her were not because of my conditions. That was because she had matured and had the ideal conditions where she came from. And I bought her from Bichmann Orchideen in Germany. So what am I doing? Am I doing something wrong? Has she just been acclimating? When I received her, it was November of 19. So I've had her a full year and it should have bloomed again in February, but clearly she didn't. And my thinking is, seeing as she's an epiphyte, she's down by the, you know, in, in trees and everything, but she is in bright, bright light in Central America. So my thinking is twofold, growth, aren't as big as the previous ones, and I didn't give her enough light. So what I'm going to do next time, when it gets warm enough, she is going onto the lower shelf of my east facing staging area when the time is right. Right now, that would be, I find a little bit too cold at this stage. So down here on my south shelf, I find it's a bit more protected. There's a curtain to protect her with, and the temperature's coming from the house also give her a little better, like maybe two or three degrees more than if she was on the east side up against a wall, which at this point is not in any kind of sunshine because we've had some seriously dull days. Got a break in the weather today, so I'm very happy I could jump on and get this video done together with Lynn Brooks. The fact that she's large, a hot to warm grower, and she is up in tall trees in full sun, even though at low altitude, makes her an incredible beast in the root department. And my pot here is now too small for what's to come. There's a lot of muscle 
required in the root department to be able to hold an orchid of this size in a tree. So I am speculating on the day that I have warm temperatures throughout, even at night, that I can up pot her. There is no need for me at this point in time to do a full root ball cleanup because when I got her, she was in bark and being a bifoliate, oh boy, then you get all the diva attributes with dumping roots the minute you change their setup. So I waited quite some time until I saw signs of new root growth before putting her into this pot, which I knew was not going to last me a long time because of what I call her muscle in the pot. If this one is an epiphyte, this one stands at 40. And if I do it right and can get up to 50 centimeters length of pseudobulb, that's a lot of roots that this orchid produces considering she hangs on in trees. So there is an up pot coming up, but I had to put her in a smaller pot to begin with simply because of how wobbly she was. And she was just growing new roots and I was not going to risk those root tips. In putting her in a bigger pot, having difficulty in maneuvering her on top of all that, because when I repotted her, I had the season changes coming and she was gonna go outside, which meant me moving her around. And because of her structures and the fact that she is so wobbly and top heavy, I put her in a smaller pot in just to give me a little bit more control with the leka, get the roots growing, and I will up pot her in a much larger oversized pot because as I call it, that muscle, her root ball is super active and it'll take over a pot very, very quickly. So yeah, diva attributes. I had no problem transitioning her into semi-hydro or self-watering, however you want to call this, in organic media because I waited for the new roots to show before even addressing cleaning her up out of that nursery pot. And it was carnage because what was in that nursery pot was not pretty. However, it's better for these bifoliates to show roots before even addressing any kind of repot, never mind going into a complete different setup. Let's have a look see. You can see how wet the leka is. That's not me. I have not watered this orchid for a while. I have not sprayed the surface for a while either. And I have kept the root ball in the reservoir, or let's say the reservoir, pretty dry. So we've got roots coming out at the bottom. The microfiber is nice. I can squeeze water out, but the reservoir is dry. That is how I've been keeping her for quite some time now because I have already moved a lot of my orchids outside, even though the weather is not ideal. I'm pushing my limits a little bit. I've got night temperatures now of 14 degrees Celsius. Currently, the days aren't going higher than 17, which is a bummer, but I'm just gonna stick with it to see how far I can keep an orchid outdoors. I normally do not like to have them outdoors when the temperatures at night are lower than 15 degrees Celsius, especially these hot growers because of my system. The evaporative cooling in the roots is not something that needs, that should be ignored. It is actually quite important to remember that there's a temperature that is the ambient temperature and then what clay and leka does in the pot and that could be a te temperature differential of about three degrees i like to say three degrees it helps me to not become complacent especially now as we're like edging towards spring and throughout the winter you've been babying you've been cautious and it gets a little bit of like monotonous to be so careful and you're just dying for the spring to come and all of a sudden complacency kicks in and that is a big big problem when it comes to me that I try to jump the gun and you know, your mistakes happen just as you get through winter and into spring, simply because you've just had enough of this moving and faffing around. So yeah, I am leaving her outdoors, even though my temperatures are now 14 degrees at night, as opposed to my preferred 15. That is why I'm keeping the reservoir a little bit drier so that I do not push the too wet root principle. You can see that even though, maybe you can see, let me see, even though I have done absolutely no spraying whatsoever, 
In fact, we've had so much rain and there's been so much humidity in the air. Look at how wet those roots are. Can I get you in? Let's have a look-see. There. Those roots are green and I have not watered her. And this is something I wish I could have during the summer. This, you know, top layer not being so bone dry when I have absolutely no humidity in the summer. So I have to do a lot, a lot of misting of the surface of my Lekka pots every day just to somehow counteract that dryness on the surface. But you see a couple of days humidity and look, these roots, they're doing really well. And I hope that they hold on. I need them when it comes to up-pot her. So she is huge, as you can tell. She is a big orchid and she needs a lot of food. Right now, seeing as I'm not keeping the reservoir wet, seeing as she's not pushing any buds, I have not actually put in any fertilizer for the last three weeks. I'm just putting in plain RO water into the pot when I see that the reservoir is empty and all I do in order to do that is just flush her through and then I catch the runoff, the last part of the runoff, not all of it, and then settle her back into the mask and let her be. I don't fertilize in that flushed water, it is just plain RO water. But that is the, my watering technique to keep her a little bit on the drier side and make sure that the reservoir doesn't stay full so that I don't risk rotting the roots. There are no buds. I keep saying I feel something, but honestly, I've been saying that for a couple of months now. <laughs> and if anything, she should have bloomed by February. But So if there's in this stage, at this point, no fertilizer, and to keep that microfiber wet enough, but not sitting in water, I just flush through with one jug of plain RO water and catch the last part of the runoff just to have a little bit of something at the bottom of the reservoir. I have not had any problems with pests on this orchid. I have been treating her with insecticidal soap every once in a while, just wiping the leaves. But that was more for me for aesthetics. I didn't even think of it as preventative measure because she's never ever had any issues with pests. But hey, if that is part of what makes a repelling effect on, on bugs, then that's great. These markings here, I got her like that. So, you know, old bulbs, old leaves, that'll happen. I'm not worried about these. They're not spreading at all. But the blooms are superb. For the size of the orchid, I'm surprised how small the blooms are. But as they bloom in clusters, it makes it worthwhile. So you do get quite a nice little show out of this sizable plant for about three and a half weeks. I didn't get much more out of it at the time. Maybe because she was just repotted and was getting used to my climate, I had smaller blooms or maybe that is just her attributes. But I can tell you, I was so frustrated when I was researching her before I bought her just because, you know, I wanted to know the size and I wanted to know if I wanted to commit to something of this size. It was so complicated to find actually the, the Cattleya guatemalensis. Every time you put in Cattleya guatemalensis into Google, you got this skinnery. And I'm like, that's not what I'm looking for. And then finally, I stumbled on a page that told me that this is actually a natural occurring hybrid between the Cattleya orantiaca and the Cattleya skinnery, or if you so choose, the reclassification of the skinnery is Guariante. So finally, I understood why I kept landing on skinnery. It was so frustrating, I cannot tell you. But I wanted the blooms, I wanted that gorgeous rose fragrance, and yet I kept coming up with a cross. Aurantiaca crossed with skinnery. And I'm like, yeah, okay, until again. So, natural hybrid occurring in nature. This is Cattleya guatemalensis. And she is a beast. And that is about everything at this point that I can tell you, with the exception of winter. I keep her on my glass shelf in my dining room area, right by the glass. If the sun is shining in directly, 
she gets full direct sun. And if not, then she doesn't get enough light even where she is stood. I can't have her on the top shelf of my blurple structure rack setup. She is too tall, she would hit the lights. My thinking is, my strategy for this coming growing season is when it's warm enough and I can put my rack onto the east side, then she is going in to the lower shelf along with all the others that are somewhat tall and that need a lot of light. And we'll see if we can trigger some better growth for next year and hopefully some blooming. Thank you so very, very much for taking the time to watch. And thank you so much, Lynn Brooks, for joining me. I am sure that yours must be well underway from judging by your hemisphere where you are. And I also want to mention that I contacted several other channels because I know they have their, their Guatemalensis and I wanted them to join in. And I understand that schedules don't always match up. But again, please, if, you, if you're ready to join in on the updates and you see this video and you want to participate for the future updates, please let me know in an email or in the comments below and I will put you on the list for future updates. In the meantime, Lynn Brooks, thank you so very much. I hope that you're doing well in your part of the world and that you are having a fantastic, fantastic summer. Me in my wind jacket. Yeah, I'm not pleased. And I keep holding her. Yeah, because I love my orchid, but I keep holding her because any breeze could knock her over. That pot is not going to be stable if there's one gust that is a bit stronger than I would imagine. So I'm just holding on to her, <laughs> just in case. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everybody. Take care, please stay safe. Bye.